Hello, welcome back to the Mobile Motorbike Mechanic Channel. I'm Steve. Today we're off to Leicester to look at a VFR 400 that's got a set of uh, carburetors that don't seem to be working correctly. So we'll see you when we get there. Right then folks, here we are with the uh, VFR 400, the NC24. So we're just going to pop the tank off, get to the carbs, get those off. We'll get, take those over to the van, dismantle them, clean them all through, get it all back together again. Hopefully uh, this one will run a bit better, or run in the first place. So we'll get that done. That's it. <laughs> Very technical lump of wood. Are you going to come off or not? No, you're not. Hang on. Whoop. Got that breather off there. There we go. That's it. Okay, airbox next. These are slightly awkward. come out with this big plate in place there's a question of getting the airbox off and then undoing clamps here around each of the carburetors and then we can lift the whole lot out but we'll get the airbox off first This is where we're trying to get to. So we've got these screws here on the... There's one. Uh, the trouble is when you push on them to unscrew it, it pushes the clamp round. Now it's not helpful. That, it's gone again. <laughs> Come back here, yeah, bugger. That'll do. Right, next one. Where's the next one? There he is. Let's thread him in there. One left. There. That's it. All right. And then when we start taking the carbs off, we're going to have to undo the throttle cables there. But we'll worry about those in a minute. But we will slacken them off to start with. Because we can. There we go. one gone and what I'm going to do is just so that's forward of the bike so I'm just going to put F on it for front so then I'll know which one's come off where it makes life a lot easier and then the rear one or the pull cable we might have to do, yeah, once the carbs are out, we'll get that one done. Try and find somewhere to prise these out. The trouble is you don't want to go prising on things that are going to bend. You just want to go nice and steady. So it's starting to move. There we go. Starting to move and then they suddenly pop. <clears throat> now we still need to undo the choke cable which is in there. But 
We'll worry about that in a second. There we go. Now we can see the choke cable. Screw that. We'll get them undone. That's the one we always forget to put back on before we start the bike up. And then, oh, why isn't it working? Ah, oh, yeah, I forgot to put the choke on. <laughs> There we go, that's that one released. And so it's just that final throttle cable. Now we can get to that on there. So, one set of carbs released, so we're going to take those over to the van, we'll get them all cleaned out, and uh, yeah, we'll see you over at the Right then, so we've got the headband on, it's a bit of a sweaty hot day. <coughs> Somebody did leave a comment on Google, I think, about me being a Dire Straits fan. Um, what we're going to have to do is get these carburetors apart. So obviously we've just seen them get them off the bike. Now we're in the shade in the back of the van. So what we're going to do is we're going to um, break all of these loose, get them all apart. We'll get into the jets and we'll get the um, yeah we'll get all the jets cleaned out, get the carburetors cleaned out, get everything sorted for the customer. So we'll get into it. The good fitting impact screwdriver for these uh, screws on the bottom is what you want. Regular viewers will notice the different hammer. The other normal hammer somewhere. I haven't lost it. I know where it is. I just haven't got it. Don't worry, it will come back. Those that don't like my carpenter's hammer, it will be seen in there. Anyway, let's have a quick look. This is the first float bar off. Let's have a look in there. Ah, oh, yeah, yeah, look at the state of that. You can see in there, lots of crud, lots of dirt. So, if we just get a cloth a second. More than just oh, nothing more than just a wipe, and you can see how much rubbish is coming out of that. So that's, that's not much use. Being a carburetor the float bowl, it needs to be clean. So what we'll do is we'll replace these float bowl gaskets. We'll get all these jets out. We'll clean them all through. We'll get everything done. And uh, yeah, once all that's done. Oh, why is he being a pig? Why is he being a pig? Yep. Yeah. So this one's underneath. There we go. Underneath the throttle mechanism. Bit of a pain. Get 
So that was that. There we go. Right. So I'm keeping the carburetors orientated to the float poles. So I don't know which so that we know which jets are coming out of which carburetor. On the V4 setup it's not quite as critical, but on some inline fours the jets differ between the carburetors. So if you're doing an inline four, just be careful of that. Make sure you don't make sure you don't get the wrong jets in the wrong place. Right, let's have a look here. Because we will be on the side of the road, we've got a bit of a mess going on. Right, so, oh, there's the main jet out of that one. All I'm going to do is dismantle all of the carburetors and then we'll clean each one as we go, putting it back together again. So we're putting back in nice clean parts. They're not too bad. Oh, yeah. Yeah, part of the jets are blocked. Yeah, they're not too bad, but they are. They do need a clean. They are blocked. So we'll get the float bowl out of this, or the float out of this one as well. This is where little pick tools and things come in handy. There we go. There's the float out of that one. And we've got some replacement parts up there, which we'll use. Bring in the new bit. Yeah, there's the float seat. So you can see there's a big old lump of rubbish sat on there. That's kind of indicative of what we're going to find in all the carburetors, I think. I literally just took that out. Big old lumps of crud like that in your carburetors. So <clears throat> they are going to get replaced. There's brand new versions as well. So we'll replace those. Gets replaced. That one. Right. So those are all the parts out of that one carburetor. Right, so try not to mix them up. We'll move on to the next one. We'll see you in a little while. So as you can see from the side of my can, there's quite a lot of dirt that's just been thrown up from <laughs> cleaning out those carburetors. So they definitely needed yeah. sorting out. Um, these are a couple of the filters that we found. You can see all the deposits on them. Now they've dried out, they start to flake away. But yeah, so all of that would be in all of those little <laughs> Um, apertures within the carburetors so we'll get all that lot replaced we've got brand new float bowl gaskets to seal everything up with so uh, yeah we'll get on and get that all back together again <laughs> Just 
just cleaning off the the seal surface so that we get a decent seal when we put the carbs back together again. Don't know if you can see along there. You see there's a load of like gunk and spooge where somebody's possibly glued it together in the past. But we'll get all that off because we're using new seals. I'm happy with that. Right, so now we've got to individually clean each component of each carburetor before we put it back together again. So what we'll do is we'll start off by cleaning the float bowl itself, get rid of all the gunk and schmoo in there, and then we'll go through clean the Venturi. We'll clean, uh, sorry, not the Venturi. Clean the emulsion tube. We'll then clean the main jet. We'll then clean the pilot jet and then we've got a brand new float seat to fit and with the washer and then the float itself and we've got a brand new float valve as well so what we can do is we can put these new components in and then we'll clean these components and then we'll yeah, three, three, three parts. So we'll put all these new components in, or well, those new components with that bit. We'll then clean those bits and fit them, and then these are the float bowl screws that fit that on. All right, so we're on to the last one. So we've done three of them. This is the last one now. So um, as you can see, there's a, there's a bit of rubbish still left in the float bowls. So we'll, we'll clean that out. Um, We'll remove the float bowl gasket, but first off, we'll, we'll just reassemble this float. So we've got a new float seat, the new float valve, the original float, and the original pin. Oops. So, valve, float valve goes in like that. Just get a 10 mil on there. Sometimes they're held in with little um, little crosshead screws, but on these ones they actually screw in themselves. Pop the float together. Doodly do. Get in there, bugger. There you go. And then we just need to put the pin in. So, I tend to use a little pair of pliers or a little pair of snips these are the snips that I've got to hand so there we go they're a pain getting them in just get the pick did I mention they're a pain getting them in oh yeah That ain't gonna go in. Right, hang on a minute. Why is that not going in? Let's pull the float out of there a second and just see why that pin won't go in. There's no point in forcing anything or rushing it because all you'll end up doing is breaking something. So that pin fits in there, all right. So let's just see why it won't go in in the carburetor itself and it will go in so it's just being an arse let's just leave it there for a second let's 
to retry this. There you go. Straight in that time. So like I say, there's no point in forcing anything or rushing it. You just take your time. If it doesn't go, take it apart. Put it back together again. Right, so we'll start off with the main jet. We've just got some jet cleaning tools here. All we're going to do is find the appropriate one and just give it a little clean. And then a bit of carb cleaner through it. And it just, that just washes off any rubbish. And then we've got a bit of compressed air just to dry it off and blow it out. Main jet done. Emulsion tube next. Uh, if you can have a look at that emulsion tube, you'll see it's completely blocked. Like, totally blocked. So, that's the reason why we're in here. That's the reason why we're doing this. So, select the correct implement. We're just going to, we're not trying to remove any brass, but we're just trying to. Give it a clean to make sure it's all running free. One, two, <laughs> now if you look at those holes, you can actually see that they're all clean. So same again. Yes, they're blowing through nicely. A bit of compressed air again. And just a final check, we just hold them up to the light and see. Yeah, and there. I don't know if you can actually see the light going through those. But yeah. Anyway, that's all clean. So now we can fit the main jet onto that emulsion tube and fit the whole lot into the carb. Right, seven mil spanner. I don't know why I'm saying seven mil spanner because your carbs might be different. Normally seven or eight mil, but there we go. All right, pilot jet, same again. Just trying to clean out the four little holes. So let's get that sorted. Again, you're probably not going to be able to see through that, but when you hold it up to the light, you want to be able to see through it. And that's all clean. So, get your pilot jet in. And there we go. Just snug him down, don't go mad. And then last thing is, we're just going to replace the seal on this float bolt. Boink, wee. Rusty seal out, nice new flexible seal in. So we'll get that fitted up, get that on there, but we'll also give the float bowl a little clean out. Any sort of loose debris in there, get rid of it. I tend to use a bit of the you old know, Hylomar blue just to hold the gasket in place whilst I'm fitting them. I find it works nicely. So, particularly in the corners of these gaskets. Just want to smear a bit on. So what we're trying to do is we're just trying to get it in the groove. You know, you don't want it. Oh, there's, there's none around the outside. Oh, 
I lied. There you go. There's a bit of air on the outside. <laughs> but yeah, you're not sort of caking the whole thing in high to marble. You? You're just trying to get it into that groove a little bit. Just to hold the gasket in place whilst it's being fitted. Mm. So, new gasket on. These gaskets are very tight. You see, and they, they ping off in the corners. So, they can be a bit of a pain. You see how that's pinging off in the corner there? You put that corner in, it will suddenly ping off in another corner. So, bit of Hylomar does wonders. Right, he's not pinged off in any corners, so he's good to fit. There we go. And your three screws. Again, depending on your float bowl, you might have three screws, you might have four. This one's a pain because we've got to get the throttle out of the way. There we go. There we go. As you can see, you've got a, a little bit of high Lamar spooging out of there. It's not like loads, it's not, it's not going everywhere. Just a tiny little bit. Because we've just used it to help fit the seals. We've not used it to actually seal the float bowls. Right, so that's those all back together. Now we can go and uh, pop them back on the bike and balance them up. Alright, so finished the carb clean on those ones. So what we're going to do, just before we refit them, a little trick I've learned over the years. Get a paint pen and you want to mark the balance screws. So there's three balance screws on these carbs. There you go. And if you mark them up with a paint pen, the paint's not likely to come off. And when you're furtling under here looking for the screws, you can find them easier because they've got a bit of paint on them. So we'll get these refitted now. Um, which way around are they? That way around. Yep, yeah, so we'll get these refitted now and then we'll um, get the bikes fired up. Hopefully it will run, fingers crossed. And uh, we'll get the, um, yeah, we'll get them balanced up for the customer. So we need to get this. I need to get the uh, choke cable fitted. There we go, that's that one done. Okay, let's just get these throttle cables back on. Oh, these are a pain. Do 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 do. Not as bad as some bikes we do, but it's still a pain. Ah, there we go. And of course, I need a terminal spanner. There's a terminal spanner. All right, they're working. <laughs> this is always the fun part with these V4s. It's getting the bloody carbs back on. Because they can be an absolute nightmare. 
<clears throat> sometimes they go, and sometimes they just flatly refuse. Let's see what these ones are going to be like. I'm going to just pop that coil bracket out just to give me a bit of extra room. Come on. Oh, please go in. That's got them. Cool. They were a struggle. <laughs> oh, I'll get this bracket back in. There we go. Alright, so I've just pop the fuel, um, fuel filter, pop the air filter back together again now. There we go. Yeah, we've got the carbs seated. They were a bit of a pain, but using a bit of um, uh, red rubber grease, they slipped right in. So we'll just get this air filter on to protect anything from living there. And then we'll run around and do up all the screws. And then we can go for a start. And there we go. Right, that's the carbs all back on. So we'll get some fuel into it. We'll fire it up. And uh, yeah, we'll see how it runs. It'll probably run like an absolute bag of spanners until we've um, balanced the carbs. But hey, as long as it runs, that's what we... That's what we care about. So in order to balance the carbs, we need to take these little um, vacuum port screws out. So there's four of them on this bike. So we've taken the two out the other side. There's this one. There's also one on this carburetor as well, but there's also a vacuum tube for the uh, fuel tank. So we'll use that. But we need to get these little screws out. And we're just gonna use a little impact screwdriver. Absolutely solid in there. So let's just get him in. There we go. And again, I've marked those with a spot of paint just so we know where they are. So if we ever come to do this in the future, or if anybody else comes to do this in the future, they can find them easily. Right, onward. Right, these are the little vacuum adapters, so we just screw these onto the bike. There we go, there's one there. I'll go and put the two around the other side. And like I say, the, the fourth one, we're just going to use this tube. That normally goes up to your fuel, t fuel tap, but we can use it as a, as a vacuum because we'll be using, we won't be using the fuel tank on this bike whilst we're doing the. Um, doing the carb balance, we'll just be using a, a standalone tank. So if you're trying to fit these little brass takeoffs, if you're trying to fit them and you can't get your fingers in because you can't quite get them in and you can't turn it and you can't do it, just pop it onto a bit of tube like so and then you can turn the tube Just like that. And then you just pop the tube off. So similarly, this is our takeoff up here. 
like right up behind this radiator hose. Right pain to get to. Little bit of hose. Yep. And there we go. And just pull the hose off. Easy. Easy when you know how. Right, let's get the carbs. Carby balance set up. Uh, now this is going to be an interesting one. I haven't done a V4 for a little while, but we're going to have to find out which balance port is which balance port. That's all right. So that's our gauges now connected to the bike. So we just need some fuel and uh, we'll be ready to go. All right. So we've got the vacuum gauges all attached. We've got the fuel tank attached. We're just running some fuel down into the carburetors just to check for leaks, make sure we've got no leaks. So, you know, after a minute or two, those carbs will be full. And we can just keep an eye on them underneath here. Doesn't look like we've got any leaks, which is brilliant. All right. Well, the carbs will be full, so we'll go for a start. Um, customer's got a brand new battery on this bike, so just to save that and give it a little bit of a helping hand, because we're not next to the van, we've got our little boost pack. So we'll just connect that a moment. Where can we go with him? Where can we go with him? Hey, don't you fall over, you bugger. Let's pop those over there. A second. Yeah, getting to that positive is going to be a pain, isn't it? Mm. Oh. Uh, might be able to go through it. There we go. Knees on. Negatives just wherever. There we go. All right, so boost packs just to save the customer's battery whilst we're trying to start it. Oh, that sounds favorable. Don't want to overheat the starter motor. almost out of fuel so we've used quite a lot of that just to fill up the carbs just give the tick over screw a little tickle there we go So we've got the bike running nicely now. Um, just pop around here, you can see on the, on the vacuum gauges, they're all over the place. But we're running on pilot jets. So I'm expecting them to be all over the place when it's on pilots. We just let the bike warm up. We'll give it, give it a couple of minutes just to warm it up. And what we'll do is we'll wind the tick over up to about 3000 RPM, check it again, set the carbs, and then we're done here. Right. Come back in a minute or two. Okay, so we're just going to increase the RPM to about 3,000 now. It's, the engine's starting to get up to temperature. So we'll get up to about 3,000 RPM, check our gauges, see where we're at on main jet. We'll just little tick over the screw. A little bit more. Bang on 3,000. You can see the carbs are way out. So 
and we'll get those balanced up now. Around. That's lead carb, okay. We've got to balance everything to that carburetor. As you can hear, as I'm turning the carburetor, Throttle's going up, so it's actually defining it all. So I have to keep turning the put the um I have to keep turning the idle down. Much better. Not there yet. Much better. Oh, f it out. Yeah, she probably just run out of fuel. Yep. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, what a pain. Okay, so we've balanced the carbs up. And now we're at... We're on the button. Obviously these are out because we're on pilot jets, not main. But ticking over very nicely. Very responsive on the throttle. So I think that's about done on this one. So what we'll do is we'll get the air filter back together again. We'll get the screws back in it and then we'll just give it one final check. Right, so that's it all back together again as much as we're going to do. The customer's going to pop the seat and panels on. So, there we go. It's on the button, ticking over nicely, everything done. So remember to like, comment and subscribe and we'll see you on the next one.